Welcome to Mickey and my crowd. This is Hilda, your host. Today we're gonna start the tutorial on stamp cross stitch. Actually, it's the third start that I do. <laughs> For some reason, everything gets messed up. Anyway, this tutorial is gonna be slow and it's gonna be for everybody. And I want to make myself clear. I don't intend to insult anybody's intelligence, but I like to teach. So if a new person had never seen the craft, be able to pick up the tutorial and do it by itself, okay? I have done that with B the Stitch, so far no complaint for the contraire. And uh, I wanna do the same thing over here. This is for somebody who has been either afraid to do it, has seen it, doesn't understand it, or have never seen a stamp cross stitch. And I'm gonna talk everything related to stamp cross stitch. I don't do counter cross stitch, okay? Uh, that's the same many times why, it doesn't matter right now. But I gotta do this with the purpose that anybody who is new, never has seen it, you'll be able to do it, okay? But I'm gonna go slow, so not everything is gonna be taught today, okay? We're gonna do some stitching, but first things first, okay? For somebody who have never seen a, um, a stamp cross stitch, a stamp cross stitch is an image that has been imprinted in ink with different color coding uh, on an Ida cloth, okay? It can come in 14 counts or 11 counts. 14 counts mean that is 14 uh, stitches per square inch and 11 count is 11 stitches by a square inch if I'm not mistaken, okay? I'm not too technical in that part, okay? So, that cloth that have these uh, stitches, I'm gonna show you the anatomy of the stitches. Here it is. They come in this uh, square, one besides the other, okay? These little rounds, let me see if I can get you close. What those represent is the holes where you put your needle on it, okay? So, oh, I'm gonna have to do it this way. So what we do, okay, the way that it has been set up, although hardly, um, in the way I'm gonna show you how to stitch is not actually sometimes the order that you follow, you know, that you follow, okay? But this is how the stitch is constructed. This is hole number one, number two, number three, and number four, okay, of your first square. Wherever in the place that you are on the fabric is the first square, okay? Besides this square, cross stitch is no other than it's a stitch that is done in a form of a cross. That's it. That's what cross stitch it is. Okay? So, right beside that stitch, there is another one. They share the same hole, and this is very important. They share the same hole, but for this, the formula will be one, two, three, and four, okay? So I identify. When you are stitching, for the people who use, you're gonna have a thread, okay? This kit comes with a thread, right? With the thread of the different color. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna explain you again, okay? I'm gonna tell you again. I just want you to see this. Okay, this is very important, especially for nobody who has them done a cross stitch in their life. So, you're gonna have a figure or whatever, a photo or uh, a design imprinted in that fabric, okay? 14 count, the holes are smaller than 
11 count. But 14 count, you can find more detail than in the 11 count. For people who has problem with eyesight, I suggest that you start with 11 count, okay? So this is the anatomy of this stitch. We're gonna come back later. Now I'm gonna teach you, now I'm gonna show you uh, why this is important. Okay, when you get your kit, right? Joy Sunday, okay, that's another thing is. There's two companies that I do recommend. Joy Sunday or May Deer. You can find Joy Sunday even on AliExpress, okay? And uh, they are pre-printed fabric. They have, they tell you on the front what is the design that is gonna be in the fabric, like this one. This is the Four Season and Scenery Window Autumn, okay? I already did the spring. I'm gonna post the video on the, on the top, uh, the finished one, okay? So you will see the finish of it. This is a 28 by 33, and it tells you whether it's 14 or 11 count. It's a 14 count, and you use two strands for 14 counts, okay? When you get your kit, you're gonna get a chart. Okay, you're gonna get the fabric. And by the way, the kit comes with instructions on the back. Okay, and it comes with instruction it tells you how to choose the strand we're going to talk about that and over here it tells you for the back stitch the back stitch is that contour or outline that you see in the flowers okay it's called back stitch because you come from the back and then you always kind of coming from the back to the front and so forth we, we will get to that okay so you get that right you get the fabric right this is what i'm telling you this is the preprinted you see the i'm going to show you this area you see the stitches in there here it is let me get you close Let me see if I can get you even closer. Okay. Here it is what I showed you in the diagram. Let's take these two. Okay. You see that the stitch, or oh, let me get one in the corner. That way you don't get confused by the rest of the image. You see this over here? that I'm highlighting, these are two stitches. You see they share a hole, two holes on it, which is the image that I will show you. Okay? So you get the fabric with the pre-printed, which I find a phenomenal to do. You get the chart okay and you get a carton with your floss now you don't see that many flow because i already keyed it up and this is where it comes how to key it up i don't suggest you work from over here because the technique that i'm going to show you how to do this so you can focus in one section is going to make you uh, keep some of the strand over here and it tends to make a mess it tends to tangle to each other and whatever so there is uh, I know another method besides the one that I'm going to show you that is uh, they sell these pockets of uh, plastic where you put with the rings where you put the floss in there it's called floss okay the thread where you put the floss in there and uh, you mark it first rule for this mark everything with the number no DMC code unless you're gonna keep it down and put it on a separate container whatever is left that I'll show you later okay because I don't want to take 
too much time okay on this so you I left one so I will show you how I uh, kit it up so it comes with this and it comes with two needles and of course I grab all the needles as uh, some of the, most of the kit has because this is what I do you see this little gadget over here they even has have them in the budget friendly companies okay and uh, this is half 30 because this preprinted has 28 colors so I use a 30 this one contains 30 uh, slots for your thread there is one that has 50 that's the one that I'm using for the deep autumn Cause that one has 32 colors and I didn't want to leave any color once I put the colors in here this goes to the trash can okay so what I do is I pick up each one by one right as you can see over here put in the appropriate slot this little gadget comes with this uh, thing where you can put the numbers on it okay it's not going to come out now because and I don't want to come out but here it is Oop. here it is it comes where you can put the number in one side and in the other okay some people say oh you can put a DMC code the problem is when you go to do the stitching on the fabric it doesn't go by DMC code it tells you at the bottom the fabric over here here they are but the DMC code is the coding uh, that is used for floss uh, it has been a standard for many years and you can find more information if you Google because this is by symbols you're gonna do this by symbols okay the symbol and the number is very important you'll find out okay let's keep on with the kidding up so you get this with a thing and then I kit up all of this right and I'm gonna kit up the last one so I'm gonna get it out of here and like I said this goes to the trash can I don't want to know about it so as you can see you have this long strand so what I do is I fold it in half right you have that double strand over here okay they all come like this okay and come loose and that's the problem that I have with them sorry if I'm moving the camera too much so I fold it in half and I make a subtle no no not Okay, don't tie it so don't know then I put it this is number 28 I put it in the slot that goes you put it over here in the little notch that you see and then you just insert it there and it's gonna stay there and another thing that I do is and this is because I have learned and when you're doing jewelry you learn how the metal behave okay these are stainless steel but they're thin and I heard a lot of people about breaking a lot of needles so what you can do is while you're working on it if you're working in one color you grab that needle and do whatever you have to do and then when you finish you put that needle back and then you use another color you're gonna see it I'm gonna do this very slow like I said okay Oop, this needle doesn't want to stay there let me see so you we probably we probably gonna do some stitching but not that many much okay today so here it is these head pins I have to think because I usually call it pin head these head pins I use it to mark the color that I'm working on okay so I don't get confused and I have some color coded so but I only use one okay once you kit it up you're gonna get this 
now these cones very stiff they tell you that some people use a hoop I don't know how the hell but anyway uh, they must have their own technique because this is so stiff that to put it in a hoop believe me you're gonna waste more time putting in the hoop than if you do it by hand okay so this comes as this so in order to soften it up a little bit what you what you can do is you see how stiff it is i don't have that much strength on my left hand so it's not gonna you know i have to use mostly my hand my right hand still a little stiff so i go around and then come back again and besides while you're working on it it's gonna start soften it up a little bit okay so don't be afraid don't be afraid do it just do it okay and this you guessed okay let's see how it is okay these like i said a uh, stamp cross stitch contains an image the image that you see over here this one printed in the fabric with color coding with symbols in different colors no color coding symbols in different colors okay in the fabric the fabric is gonna tell you in some instances what color number it is. That's the importance for you to key it up by numbers, okay? If it has 28, you get whatever method you wanna use, put one through 28, and then you start kidding the, the, the thread, the floss. So in the fabric, like number 12 over here right so you will number 12 you see that number 12 is the purple uh, block so purple squares here it is it tells you the DMC code but that's mostly for purpose of kitting down when you uh, want to do um, want to save the reminder of the floss whatever remains okay so at the bottom of the fabric, you're gonna have the full stitch, all the symbols that are in the fabric, okay? And over here, continue with full stitch, and it tells you over here the back stitch. We're gonna learn about back stitch, but that's later on. And the good thing about this kit is that not everything is back stitch, okay? Just some flowers, some outline, okay? But not everything. Now, you got this. This is the first time you do it. You understand the format of the stitch, right? You know you have to use your needle, but where in the hell do I start? Ta-da! I have an epiphany no long time ago and I'm doing that on deep autumn but most of the kit especially the big one comes divided by sections okay which helps you in focusing that section okay so you can finish faster and you don't get overwhelmed by all the color and feel like you're never gonna finish okay so but this one it has a picture of the rendering, right? With a frame, give you idea of framing most of these kids. Well, all of them, I think. But this one doesn't have that. Let me show you the one from Deep Autumn. This is what I'm talking about. We just finished the first section, we're starting the second. But I don't suggest you do this. If you're a newbie or you're, you know, going blah, 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 crazy about this, you just don't do this. Do this, okay? That's why both are autumn, okay? So we've just finished this. You see one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight segments they divided. Because this is a bigger one. Okay. This is a. Let me tell you. This is a 53 by 42. So that's a little big. Okay. So that came. But not all the uh, kits comes with this. Okay. So what we do. <clears throat> what we're going to do in this case. We're still going to divide it by section. Because this kit came by page. It tells you the page. That's the first page. That's the second page. And the third and the fourth. Because this is relatively uh, a, a very small kit, okay? Although I have a smaller than this, but this is a, a, a small kit, so you don't need to divide it in section as much as the deep autumn. But it has the page which you can use it as the sections, and you see it's big enough for you to be able to work yourself around. So, two things we're gonna learn today how we choose how we use the chart to mark the page that you're going to start working okay at the same time i'm going to teach you the stitch and i'm going to stitch uh teach you because there's two ways to stitch this okay but we're going to talk about that in a few minutes let's find out first okay where should we start okay so here is the first page right and you got these symbols now the symbols in here are not the same as in the fabric because most of the time this one you can give it away to somebody who does come to cross stitch but i found the two other uses for this one is the one that we're going to discuss now the other one we we'll probably discuss later okay because i want to go slow with you guys i don't want to you know mm -mm, okay i don't want to rush you into this so we got this and we got the printed part right that match this so how we do this we need to establish a boundary or a, a li, uh, limit or a boulder or whatever you want to call it, however you want to call it, between the first page, the second page, the third and the fourth, okay? So, for the first page, okay, it seems like it's going to be somewhere around here. Oh, that's going to be, oh, because the second page is going to be a smaller it's going to be narrower. Look. Take a look at that. And take a look at this. So it will be better. You focus. Focus, focus, focus. Okay. That's the, that's the, the theme of it. That's how you can work out this if you are new. So. We're going to look over here. Right. Let's find the bottom part okay because this is the limit the left side okay we don't need to go over there we need to find the bottom part okay and make a stitch to mark it okay to mark the the bottom part so over here right we have r and f f f 3f right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here we're gonna look for the r which is number 26 and the f which is number 16. however one thing i want to clarify these numbers are these numbers up here these ones up here okay these numbers on the left over here are these numbers over here. And you got the DMC code too. The only thing that changed is the symbol. 
okay is the symbol that's the only thing that changed in the fabric is different than in the shard okay but like i said mostly people use it for counter cross stitch but we are going to be using the ones in the fabric okay but for the purpose of marking the limits or the boundaries for you to be able to focus and work okay and to learn because then you don't have to concentrate oh uh, like you start with this color and then you go around here and then you go around here and then you go around here and all this part and it seems like it's interminable you know doesn't finish so what we're gonna do like I said, it's the RFF, okay? So we look at that symbol over here. The R is number 26, which is this corner over here. And 26 over here, it tells you that is a, a blue dot or a blue. Do this has, okay okay because it has the block over here i thought that it was having french knot and i said oh no i never see french knot so it's this blue circle over here that blue circle number 26 okay the other three but you gotta work with both the other three f is number 16 what symbol is number 16? The yellow. The yellow square. So we go over here, right? And I see it over here already. Here it is. R, F, F, F. That's what we're gonna start at the first part. So what I'm gonna do is is number 26 I'm gonna grab number 26 here it is and I'm just gonna grab one strand and over here we're gonna start uh, the stitch okay over here is one going to tell you how you're going to do this. I mean, the two ways that you can do this. Okay. Now let's put this one back. Let me put the number 26 over here. We're just going to need do one stitch because, um, oh, we can do up, but we want first one to mark the boundaries of this. Okay. Okay. Here is, now I'm going to explain about the strands or the floss. Okay, let's talk about floss. Each floss contains six, six strands. Let me get this upside down first so you won't. Okay, the camera is about to finish. We're back. So these floss right Ay, come on i'm trying to get you focus on this these floss or this strand contain these floss contain six strands Okay, six little pieces of thread, not so little though, let me show you, here they are, you see the six in there, let me uh, spread it out, because you need to spread it out real good in order to pull the strand, I'm going to teach you a trick that hasn't failed to me, okay? No failing. This one is so messed up this size. Let me see if I can do it better over here. 
This is from Everyday E-Craft. This kit. I bought all four of them. I went nuts when I found out about stamp cross stitch. Okay. I'm trying to spread it out as much as possible so you can see the six strands. Still one strand over here that wants to keep herself stuck. Let's see. You can see six strands. No, you cannot see it because they still stuck over here. This one just it just that I don't like this already all bent up and stuff like that. Let me cut it a little bit because I don't like that bent in there. Yeah, I'm gonna cut it a little bit just for the purpose of teaching you. I don't do this, okay? Let me now get it straight. What you do is the reason that I want to uh, separate, so I'll show you, because 14 count, you use two strands to do a stitch. Now, you have a choice, okay? You either pick up two strands from here, make a knot at the end, and start stitching. Okay? It's a long thread. Let me show you here. It's a very long thread. And some people are, don't like to work with long thread. I don't like it to work with long thread. Let me see if this one is working now. Okay, here we got. We got the six strands in here. We got the six strands in here. Okay. So you have a choice, right? To pick up two strands, work with those long ones, and put a knot, but you have to do a knot, pass it through the back thread, and the, the problem with that is too bulky. And if you're gonna frame this and you're gonna put it because usually for framing this, you gotta stick it to a, you gotta put it in a sticking board, something like that, and stretch it out, and it's gonna look bulky, okay? We already have enough with the hairy stuff on the back. So, what I do suggest, and this is the one that I'm gonna teach you. This is the one that I'm gonna be using. What we usually do is what is called the loop method. The loop method, when you're gonna grab the strand before I go through that, when you grab the strand and you spread it out like this, grab the strand that is closer to you, to the right side, okay? This one, okay? You just grab it and pull it. Never mind this. And voila. Never fails me. Never. Never. If you pull that strand. If you try to pull one in the middle, maybe because the way that you're grabbing it is gonna get uh it's gonna get knotted. Okay. So you got one strand, right? This is how you're gonna make two strands. But before you make well, you can make it this two strand first. Okay, to make the two strand, you just put the ends together. Okay, and it's a shorter strand, but long enough to last you for stitching for a week. 
Let me see if I can put you this so you can see in perspective. Okay. Let me take this out. Let me take this out. Here it is. I just pull it strand and fold it in half and you're gonna see the difference in size. Take a look at this. This is where it ends. Let me show you. This is where it ends, okay? This is where it ends. Why the rest, take a look at this. You got all still this. If you do it, two strands, single two strands, okay? So what we do is we grab one strand like I show you, right? We, want, we grab one strand, we fold it in half, right? And we put the ends together, right? Level it together. I cut this a little bit because I'm gonna use a threader. So, and it's gonna form the loop at the end. That loop is very important for the loop method, okay? I'm glad that I have the black glove on it. But before you do that, before you do a stitch, I suggest you grab a thread uh, waxer, either a big wax or whatever is it that you use, usually use for thread. Uh, these little things that I just cut off, they're flying all, all over the place. So you just grab it and just give it a one pass. You can do it in half folding the thread in half okay because what that does is going to keep the thread straight however when you do this try to keep your threads parallel to each other side by side okay so now we're going to thread this let me grab my threader I'm going to use this. Let's see if I can see from far away. Oh, that's great. It just the glove tends to grab the thread and keep it, you know, gets tangled in there. I have to do marbles with this and this is no working I'm sorry guys I'm gonna have to put it closer to me okay here it is and you pull it and that's it now for the 14 count um, needle you gotta use this type of threader you cannot use one that it's like a little heavy metal has like a curve at the top i don't have it right here right now uh i'll show you the next time and because that one tends to break the needle the 14 count needle so you use you thread this okay we took one strand we fold it in half we wax it and we just thread it because we're gonna do the loop method and we are going to, like I said, we are going to do this number. This is number 26, okay, which is the R on the chart, okay, because we're going to establish the boundary of the first section, the first page, okay. Let me get my gladiator. Get your thumb uh, protector though. And 
we're gonna start over here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this little bit over here but this is the first stitch that is gonna mark the bottom side okay this is the first stitch that is gonna mark the bottom side but I'm gonna do all this so I can uh, show you okay the loop method if you use the knot <coughs> you're gonna have to go back here go through the threads you know so the knot doesn't come out out of the hole and then you're gonna do the, your stitch but if you use the loop method you avoid the knot and you kind of do uh let me get this closer and you kind of do uh what we call it an extra stitch okay okay here we go so we're gonna do the loop method god jesus christ when she decides not to loop help she doesn't want to help. I'm just trying to play because I unfortunately put it on macro and I didn't want to. Okay, I have it on auto in there. Okay. Oh, come on. Because my battery is almost gone. So to do the loop method, I'm going to be a little bit uncomfortable here, but I want to teach you this. So to do the loop method, you just put it through the first hole. Let me show you in the graphic. For those of you. You're going to pass the needle from the top through this hole come down right and you're gonna come up here okay and then you're gonna have a loop over here okay let's do that part so like I was saying you come out from the top why this one okay you're gonna come out from the top you're gonna come down here and you're gonna pull the needle until you leave a little bit of the loop okay not that much make sure that the loop is straight and everything is straight okay and then you're gonna pass the needle through the loop That's going to make a little knot. You see right there? Can you see it? You're going to make a little knot. And then you come through here, through the same hole. You're going to put the needle through the same hole. Let me explain you over here. Once you pass the needle, right? Once you pass the needle through the hole, right? You're going to pass it through here on the back. Okay? 
So let's move it to the back. Here it is. I'm gonna have to be keep on moving this thing. Okay, we're gonna pass it through the back in that same hole, okay? Make sure it's in the same hole, okay? The same hole. You coming back, you're gonna pull a little tight and you don't see the knot in there. No, you see it over here, that much. Why? Because it's a knot made by the loop. Each person does a knot differently. So some people are gonna have a bigger knot than other people. So this is what I like this method. And also even myself. Some days I, I do bigger knots than the other one. And I'm talking about the beading stitches, okay? So it's right there. There's no way it's gonna come out then, okay? You have the first one. That's called half stitch. Okay, I'm gonna show you later how that can be used in advantage in a column like this. I'm not gonna do it now. Like I said, I wanna do this slowly and surely. Okay? So you got that, now you're gonna come out you can use this method or you can use the method that I'm going to show you next, okay? You're going to come out through the third. Let me try, okay. You're going to come out through here, which in the graphic will be coming out from here. Okay. You went inside, okay, you pull the knot, and now you're coming out of here. Okay? And what you're gonna do is, blah, 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 you're gonna go inside here. Okay? Now, like I said, this is not to insult anybody's intelligence, but I gotta teach, you know, in different levels and different people have different learning curves. So, you know, so you got that. It's coming out of that third hole, right? And then you're gonna put it through that fourth hole in there, right? And you're gonna do that. And you got, it's gonna get a little cranky the first time because of the wax, okay? And here you have your first stitch. Yeah! Okay? So now we're gonna do the stitch up, up, uh, up in top, okay? Because we're gonna do this up to here and then we're gonna do the R so we can mark this boundary, okay? So, what you're gonna do is, if you come out through this hole, you're gonna pull the thread back. Cause you just got in, you cannot do it there. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna go through one again. Sorry guys, but I have to look at where I'm going. You're gonna go through one, right? And then come out through two. Make sure you don't puncture the thread, okay? Make it put in three there and come down here. And then looking here again and on three and then down on four. You got your second stitch, okay? Now you're gonna come down again. I'm gonna teach you this method. So for you who are starting, you can do this. So it will be easier for you. So you can get used to it. Then I will teach you the faster method, method later. Maybe on the next class. Cause I don't wanna, first I wanna put the band, I wanna teach you this about dividing by sections. Oop, nope. I'm not supposed to do that. It's this. You see, I'm used to it already. 
that's the problem that's the method I was gonna take that that I use to be faster so we are doing this so you can get the hang of it okay We're coming out on one. We're going down to two. All right. Making sure that your thread is straight, nice and neat. We're coming up from three. Hole number three. Oh. My needle, needle just came off. Oh, Jesus Christ, I cannot see where I'm putting this the thread through. Okay. Let's do the final one. Okay, we came out through front three, right? And we're going through four. Again, you come up on one. Sometimes the ink of the previous one won't let you see the hole. Okay. I want to make sure that I'm not puncturing the fabric or a thread. And then come down through two. Here you come out through th two. Now, through three, I'm sorry. You're gonna come out through three. Now, to close it, you can close it with the loop method too, okay? And, oh, you can go it down, and make it out on the back, and keep on going. And put it on the knee. but I like the loop method so I'm going to turn the fabric because we came out from three right and now what we want to do is we're not going to go through the four right and come out through three let me show you in the graphic I'm gonna show I'm gonna use uh I'm gonna use this one okay once you have your X right you have your half you're gonna come out of here you're gonna go inside here this hole right then you're gonna Put the needle, you're gonna come out again over here, okay? And you're gonna pull onto this another loop in there. Let me show you. Let me show you. This is what I'm doing. The reason I have to turn the fabric is so it will be easier for me. You see, I came out through three. I'm going in in four, but I'm also coming out again, the needle, uh, through three. Okay? First came out the needle with the thread from three. And now it's going in the needle with the thread on four. And the needle and part of the thread is going to come out of three. And here is you can straight the loop with the with the needle. Okay. 
and here is your loop okay you're gonna again like you do when you start you're gonna pull, pass the needle through the loop tighten it up and you're gonna go through that hole again okay and here you got and over here okay what you're gonna do is is go through the inside these threads you can go more than once if you want to I I usually go once when it, they saw uh, more threads because they are all covering the middle and you know they don't let you see and just leave a little tail that little tail just in case when you wash it okay it come up so we are done with this part because this is the left side of the boundary that we established in. okay we just did this this part over here okay uh, the battery is almost gone I'm gonna change it yeah hold on now we finish that little part over here now we're gonna do the 3F in here these ones okay and then we have that corner and the f is number 16. let's get number 16 real quick because we still have to do the other side okay number 16 is this one over here number 16 She's a yellow thing. And F is number 16. Yes. I was just trying to confirm it. Again, we're going to review again. What we just uh, learned. Like I said, i only going to apply the loop method. Okay. We have more than one floss over here, so we're gonna uh, do this. We're gonna put it back, right? And we're gonna grab another one. Remember, we're gonna repeat this. So you guys, the newbies, or whoever never done this, can have uh, understanding. I'm trying to do. I'm trying to fan this up. Remember, find it out. That's what they tell you over here. Look at how the guy does it. You see how he fans it out? So, has some fuzz on it. This one has some fuzz on it. I'm trying to find this one out too because the trick in here is to pick up the ones at the further side. God, this one has so much fuzz. Okay, 
here. Okay. Here you got your four and two. These two in here. That, oh man, these thread love to be stuck to each other. Here they are, the four. So I'm gonna pick out the one that most on the right, okay? To the right, and no miss. I'm telling you, this is the way I do it. So instead of using two, like I said, you pick up one strand and you're gonna put the ends together because you want to have enough thread to work for a little while. You cannot have it too short either. And not too long that it gets tangled easily okay and then you put the thread like this parallel right and we're gonna pass it through the wax once okay it's not like you're gonna put a half a ton in there okay So, here it is, then we're going to insert it, right, which I ended up having it closer to me because I couldn't see where the thread was going because my hand is no good. Okay, we pull it, we pull the thread in through the needle. We pull the thread through the threader and we pull it, okay? And we leave a good tail so we can work it out. Now, this is the F, okay? We're gonna... We're gonna be working out the F. The 3F from the short the 16 which is the three yellow blocks in here okay i like to work from right to left because it's easier for me since i'm right-handed so we're going to do the loop again and in this area you'll be able to see it better okay Okay, let's do it again. Remember, when you fold it in half, there's a loop at the end. Okay, except for these little fussy things. There's a loop at the end. That's the loop we're gonna use to make the stitch, to anchor the stitch, okay? So we're gonna go through one. Ah, oh, God, Jesus Christ. Okay, so no, it's not there, it's in here. Okay, so here it goes. So here it goes. Oh God. Let me put it that way. I'm just gonna have to do it this way. Okay, so we're gonna go through one. I'm gonna come out through number through like this. That's how you do it. Okay, you push at the needle, pull, 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 and then you have this little loop 
You're going to pass the needle through the loop, right? You're going to pull it again, and that's going to make a little knot, okay? You go down again, so the knot comes on the back, and you pull a little bit. And the reason this is very important, because when you get to do this color, remember, they are sharing the same hole. You're going to have to put the needle through there. Okay? Or come out of there. So, depend on the technique. So, it's very important that that little knot, you pull it out. So, it will come out to the back. And leave some space for the, for the future uh, stitch. Okay, and now we're going to come out from three. The problem with this method, oops. The problem with the in and out method is that takes longer. Okay. We're going to come out of here. Again. And this is sideways. This is not uh, up and up, going up. Sideways, that's what I'm saying. You work a little bit different. You don't work in the same order. You Now you're going to come out out of two because if you come out out of one, the thread is going to come out because you just got in. You know, it's going to undo the stitch, the half stitch. And come in here. I... I tend to do my method, but I don't want to teach you now. I want to first establish the boundaries to work this. I hope you're seeing this. Over here, here it is. You are sharing a hole with the previous thread and the previous color and you have to make sure that goes out smoothly comes out smoothly that it's not puncture you can hear like a, a click when it punctures the uh, the thread And now we're going to close this because we are done with that corner. This corner is marking, uh, is marking the marking, <laughs> is marking the first part of the um, boundaries, limits, border, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so we're going to do now the other part of the loop. Let's see. These will come in here. I probably it's the colors that is making it, you know, lose the focus. Okay, so now we're going to do the loop again to close this stitch. We're coming in through four. We're going to bend the needle a little bit and we're going to come out through three, right? We're going to pull, 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 right? Got to make sure those loops are okay. And then there is a loop. And you're gonna pass the needle through that loop. Make sure you grab both loops, okay? And you pull. And you're gonna come through here. 
to pull the knot on the back, right? And over here we have some stitches that we can go through. We don't, I don't go too far. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, you have your first stitches. Okay. You're noticing that they are sharing the same hole. But you're stitching according to the color code and all the symbol because these are colors this is symbol this is symbol uh, this is symbol symbol color okay color okay so we establish that part right now so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this one Oh, we have an F over here, which we were just doing it. So we're going to keep that needle, right? And we're going to find out what that zero means. It's number 10. Yeah. Zero is number 10, according to this. But I'm not interested in this symbol nor the uh, DMC code in here. I'm interested in this number, number 10. So I'm going to look number 10 over here. Right? And it has a purple dot. So if you look at this. I am sorry about the sorry about the glare. If you look at this, these two F and the zero. So I'm gonna count how many zero. So these two no no I don't have to count how many zero. These two F have two zero on the left. So I gotta find that. And the two F remember are the yellow blocks. And the two zeros are the purple dot. So, since we already right, established the line over here, we can do this. Or, I can go back, grab this, right, and use this to find the F with the dots. You got, you got two F and two zero, which is the two uh, purple dots. So here they are, right? And also you can go by this because on the picture you can see that there is a space in between one group and the other. So the two F and the two purple dots, I mean the two yellow blocks and the two purple dots should be together by a, and then separated with the other group by a blank space. So here it is. And that black space is the one that leads to the arch. So, having said that, you see, it's a trick of the tray. I'm trying to get this. Here it is. Here it is. Here they are. A 2F, the two pepper dot. The line separated, then we got one, two, three, F, which are here. And then we got a, a whole bunch of F. Right? Mm-hmm. 
one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, five, which we have five, and then two. So this is the boundary for the right side. So since we have already the F, but now here is the pickle. You just cut this off, okay? So you cannot use the loop method um, unless you grab one, right? You take one off and then put them together and keep on working. But what happens here is that you can still work in over here, okay? You can jump three and still work in over here, okay? So we're going to do this one, but I'm going to teach you when you cut off, and you don't have the loop, I'm going to teach you another method. It's called a pinch stitch. It's called a pinch because, you know, like a pinch of salt, a little bit. So that's what it is, a little bit of stitch. Okay? So, I already got my eyes on it. Here it is. To do the pinch stitch, To do the pin stitch, you're gonna come back. You're gonna come from the back, I'm sorry. You're not gonna come back, you're gonna come from the back. Okay. You're gonna come from the back and you're gonna come through the needle through the middle of the stitch. Okay? Let me show you. gonna come from the back has to be in the middle you cannot do it through the holes okay there's some people who teach how to put the thread spread you know start it and then you go over it but that makes it bulky so this is what I'm talking about. Let me put a little bit. This is what I'm talking about. This is where you're coming from, you see? Is the middle of the stitch. So you're gonna pull, you're gonna turn your fabric because you're gonna make sure you don't pull too much or you don't pull hard enough that it comes out. Because that happened on the deep autumn. It turns out that, so you pinch it with your finger, right? And then you're gonna come back in, not through that same hole, but through that same center of the stitch, any place, okay? As long as it's not either of the hole or the hole that you just came through because it doesn't make sense. You wanna come out. I'm trying and trying. It's hard to pinch it, I know, because the the fabric is so stiff and the ink doesn't help. Okay, here it is. Here. Okay? You pinch it over there. Remember to keep grabbing the one on the back so it won't come out because you're gonna pull this. Right? Sorry about that. You're gonna pull this, right? You see over there? Let me make sure that I'm grabbing the other one on the back. Because you grab the other one on the back and then you can pull a little bit tighter. You see it's a pinch of a, of a stitch. That's why they call it a pinch stitch. Just a little bit. Because when you do the X now, right? When you do the, the cross stitch, and I'm trying to find the hole here. Because I'm not used to it. Okay. 
you go there do this okay you gotta be careful whoop I thought that he pulled a little bit yeah you have to be careful because it's gonna come out oh I see only one leg in there okay so here we go and then you're gonna come through here gonna do your thing you see and that's gonna keep it tight and then we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this oh no nope. I'm gonna do this <laughs> oh, mm. I'm gonna do this and over here to finish you can do the loop okay to finish you can do the loop okay I'm gonna turn it around a little bit because that it will be easier do the loop again going in through four coming out ugh. going in through four coming out through three okay you're gonna pull And then you're gonna go through the loop, through both loop, because remember it's a double, it's a double strand, double state. Okay, and then you're gonna come through here. That's where the knot is. Yep, you're gonna come through here. that's it and then we're gonna close because we're gonna now go up to establish the boundary and then we're gonna be done in there okay I teach you the stitch we're gonna review it we're gonna review it with the diagram I'm gonna review again with you like I said this is not the purpose of insulting anybody's intelligence it's just that anybody can do this if it follows through here are your two stitch I'm gonna um, put the, this thread away and then we'll be back okay well guys I went ahead and prep, prep the needle, the thread, and with number 10 that we saw that is the round purple, remember, that's the zero over here, which tells you over here that is number 10, okay? So, and that's the one that we're working on. And, like I always do, here it is my number 10 marked with a pin head so I will know that I'm working on that color okay because now I'm gonna be working on that color I'm gonna show you that we're gonna put this up here I'm gonna show you my way of stitching because honestly <laughs> I want to hurry up a little bit on here 
so I'm gonna show you how I stage and then I will repeat next time okay and another thing is since I know you our guys are busy school is coming you gotta prep your kids and everything post in the comments below if you want to do this every week or every two weeks okay because this is short one this is <laughs> you know um, and if you need any help any more help just let me know okay so I'm gonna teach you the other way remember we're establishing the boundaries you know the borders so we can focus and concentrate on this area okay so we're gonna do this one we're gonna do this row over here okay and i'm gonna teach you with that one and then we're gonna dump we'll be done with that okay I don't wanna if you have any doubt please you can rewind the video you can do whatever you want I gotta get my hand ready I'm sorry guys for this but I gotta get my hand ready so and I'm gonna repeat it next week, okay? Just in case. Boy, I need a wide angle camera. Okay, here it is. So now we're gonna do this line because between this and this up that's what we're going to focus on stitching and finish it and then we go to this side okay so let's get started okay the other way to do the stitching is what i call it like a getting a stitch ahead it's just like you pass the needle through two holes okay Over here, you won't be able to see the holes very well because it's dark, okay? But the loop, I got my thread with my loop, okay? And then next week also, I'm gonna repeat the pinch stitch, okay? So, next time, I mean. So we're gonna do the loop, right? Put a little bit and put the needle through the loop, pull it tight, pass the needle through here, oh god. Pass the needle through here, right? But instead of going down and pulling on the back, what you're gonna do, since you need to do the other half of the stitch to complete the cross stitch, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the needle inside that hole, but we're gonna come out out of the four, like this. Okay? And we're gonna pull tight and you can hear that thing about you know it's like you can hear when you the knot goes inside okay the knot so now we're gonna go this way okay but to go to the top right since you gotta do me okay you gotta do this one first okay 
and the other one second. So since we are right there, okay, where is it that we are? Okay. Since we came out of the four and we're about to do this one, we're about to put it over here. To do the one on the top, you're going to come back up through here. Okay? Let me show you. Next week I will have a clearer picture. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so I'm going to come back up through this hole where I just came out. Honestly, the trooper thing is bugging me and the eyeglasses. I can see better without them. So we're going to come out through here. We're going to come out through there where the same thread is coming out and we're going to pull. Okay, you got that, right? Another way to advance this. Well, I'm going to teach you this one. The other way, I'm going to teach you later. Okay. I just don't want to get you... Because sometimes you're going to have to use this method. One stitch, one cross stitch at a time. Depending on where you are in the canvas. Okay. So here it is. I'm going through one. Coming out through four. Pull. And you got the half stitch. You are out from four. Coming in through three. And come back through four. Pull the stitch. And you got the full stitch. Okay, again, going through one, right? Coming out from four. You won't be able to see clearly over here because of the... Oh, coming out through four. Pull it. Coming out through four, going in through three. And you come out through four again. Okay. Again, you're coming out actually out of two for this one, but it's four for this one, okay? So, again, one, four, pull, four, three, four, pull, okay? You just have to make sure that your stitches are parallel. Okay? And then again... Out of one... Four... Out of four. In one, four, out of four, out. In three. Come back to four, out. And pull. Okay, here you go again. Going out of one, coming in one, coming out of four. You see, that advances you a lot. Okay, then going in one, coming out of three. I can't. I just can't, okay? <laughs> if you want to do it that way, that's fine with you. If you have the patience for that, me, I have so many stuff going on that I don't have time for that. So I love the stamp cross stitch. I want to do them, but I got to find an efficiency and better way to do it. Okay. So here it is. And here. Now, over here, I'm not going to cut the thread because, like I said, between here... Let me see if I can pull it a little back. That both can fit on the... Okay, here they are. Okay. Let me see. Between here and here, all the way to the top over here, 
you have to remember that you got to go the same line. Okay? You have to go through all this. And there is a set for this. This is backstage. Don't mind that. Yeah. This part. Don't mind that. Okay? But you have to come through here all the way up. Right over here. The advantage of this camera is that it has a lot of blocking. A lot. Okay? Just a little bit of confetti in the center of the flowers. But it has a lot of blocks. So it should be easier. Okay? So now I proceed, right, to do everything that is inside this. From this line up. And from this to this. Okay? So how do I jump to the next line? Easy. You are on one. Right? You are on one. Right? And you're going to come through two. In this case, it's easier to come out through four. Okay? You don't have, like I said at the beginning, you don't have to follow the order of the numbers. It's for reference when you're going to do the stitch. But here it is. I'm going to come out through four. Go that these holes are tight. Okay? And pull it. And then I'm going to go through. Oh, I didn't do this. Okay, how do you fix that? Easy. You're going to go through here. I forgot the other half stitch of this. So I'm going to go through here. Come out through four. Right? This one is complete. Now i got to complete this one that I forgot. And then what I'm going to do is. Okay. Guys, I'm sorry. We have the camera told me that the card was full and I have to empty the card. I don't know where we um we stopped because the camera stopped and I didn't realize it until I look up uh, the screen. So what I'm gonna do is I just gonna so we're gonna say goodbye for now i mean no goodbye see you later uh i will review whatever is in the video and then next week or next time um we can continue and we're gonna do a small review summary now uh please leave in your comment if you wanted to do this weekly or bi-weekly since the um this the stamp cross stitch is very small so we still have a long way to go for autumn and just let me know in the comment okay thank you for watching i hope if you have any question feel free to ask them either in the comments or you know where to locate it uh the two facebook groups are in the description box the one for the stamp beater stitches and stamp cross stitch you can go over there. We have some other events. And um, see you next time. So don't forget to kiss and hug your fur baby from Mickey and I. Much love and peace to all of you. Bye.